Hey guys, Monty here. There's three things that I enjoy when I'm out winter camping. It's comfiness, coziness, and steak. Juicy, delicious, wonderful steak. Just eating it and thinking about it and smelling it and... What, what were we talking about? Who are you guys? Where, where am I? Steak? I think I see some steak. I'm gonna go get the steak. Alright Monty, you ready? You ready Monty? Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am out with uh, Professor Stank, and uh, we're gonna spend another night out here in the woods. Um, right now, we're going down a snowy two track. There's a lot more snow than is average this time of year. So basically, what I'm looking for is everything's super thick. That's no fun to go through with the sled, as you can see behind me. So I'm looking for, we're just gonna keep going on this two track until I can see a nice spot with like some open big red pines or a hardwood forest or somewhere. I was kind of planning on being able to go further, but with all the snow this time of year, you have no idea what's plowed, where you have to park your car. I ended up having to park closer to a main road and walk from there. So unless I want to be camping right next to a, a main road, I got to walk down this two track of ways and find a spot. So we're going to keep on trucking. Oh, one more thing, <clears throat> a little bit of a late start. <laughs> yeah, so let's go Monty. <laughs> going to be our spot for the evening. So a couple things I want to say right off the bat is, it's winter. <laughs> As you can see, it's winter. Snow's on the ground. Like I said, more than normal. So winter camping in full force. Now what we're going to be sleeping under tonight is just a tarp. Nothing crazy, no shelter building. Um, I'm going to try, I have a couple ideas for shelters this winter. Um, but I just wanted to get out, you know, while there's snow, get used to it. Secondly, you'll notice we're both wearing orange. That's because it is still hunting season and Monty kind of looks like a nice juicy plump deer and I don't want him getting shot. I don't want to get shot. And I've heard some horror stories, you know, you'd think any normal 
sane person would never shoot at a talking person or a short little dog. But I'm sure those people are out here. I think he's a nice puppy deer. Right, Monty? <laughs> Monty, get your booties on. And uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, because of our late start today, we didn't go in very far. I'm about a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile away from the truck. We went off the two track, found this first big open red pine stand, walked in a ways, and this is where we're setting up. So we're not crazy far um, deep in the woods today. But I think what I'm gonna do is set up between these two trees here, pull my tarp back like this, and uh, yeah, we'll be sleeping on our tarp, have our fire pit right there. So first things first, Let's clear some of the snow and see what we got on the ground. What do you think, Monty? You ready for this winter camp? Another season? Tis the season. Right, Monty? Huh? We're gonna have to get him a spot to throw the stick or uh, maybe go back to the two track pat it down because I think a snowmobile went down it because it's a little bit more packed than through, through, through here but since there's such thick coverage uh, with these trees and whatnot it's actually less snow actually so that doesn't make sense maybe better in here but I already see I'm scoping out and I see a nice dead pine that's laying down in between some trees over there some big old branches over there you know, you gotta scope out your firewood, right? So we've always gotta get our priorities straight when we're doing this. Priority one, get the snow clear spot. Priority two, get your tarp up. Priority three, comfortize the Monty. You got to comfortize the Monty. Right, bud? Okay. definitely not very deep and luckily the ground's not frozen yet so well it's not super frozen so that means any logs I find I can move they won't be a nightmare you always forget you know when I was loading up and getting my stuff ready I just have one layer of thermals on um, what I'm wearing, what I always wear for winter gear, doesn't matter the temperature. When I'm hiking in, I've got my Shoreline Carhartts, which are not made for winter, and then one layer of smart wools. And you know, I kind of get a little chilly in the beginning, right when I'm at the car. As soon as you start moving though, start building up a sweat right away. But I always wear the same stuff. I don't think we need these on. One other quick mention. You remember at the end of last year I got some new snowshoes. These are some tubs. Um, my old ones used to just have the plastic clip. And these ones have like a little tightening thing with wires that tightens your foot in. These are so much better than the old ones. The old ones, whew. They would come off all the time. It was so annoying. These ones stay pretty well. I think this year I might get to do an early Quincy because there is definitely enough snow last year was a pretty rough winter and we got four feet of snow if you remember had Jake's ski guy fall on his face and needing help and <laughs> built that big old deep snow shelter we're about a third of the way there well I guess once it packs down it'll be a lot less but last year kind of did something similar not quite as much but it melted this year it don't look like it's melting There we go. 
There's a big wet frozen log. Not frozen to the ground though. Okay, that's good enough to start. Let's get the tarp off. Oh, the rat's nest, it's back. Okay. Oh man. I know you guys have given me wonderful suggestions on how to uh, destroy the rat's nest, but I feel like the rat's nest has become a part of this channel and uh, to remove it would take away something from the channel. So rather than learn and evolve and become a better outdoorsman, we're gonna be stubborn, stick it out in our old bad ways, bad habits, and just never learn. I think I think that's the right way to go about it. You know, I just, I can feel it. We're gonna tie up our tarp a little bit differently than I normally do, because we're, we're evolving in some ways. Uh, normally, you know, I'll take the two corners and tie them to a tree they were actually gonna do like a ridge line. Wow. <laughs> and uh, use that. That's how you're supposed to do it. That's better. It's better than the way I normally just throw up the tarp real quick. And maybe we'll, we'll teach a couple knots here if you don't know them already. So let's come on over to this tree. Tie it on here. We're gonna tie up the one end. This, this is the end that's not gonna move. So we're gonna put, take your one end, you put it on the tree. Now what I used to do is I used to just do a over, double overhand knot, whereas you cross like that, and then you cross again like that, and you tighten it down, and that knot doesn't hold very well, so you don't want to be doing that knot. But we're going to do what's called the double double half hitch, or two half hitches, and it's very similar. It's you just got to it just it's very similar. I'll show you. Okay, so for the double double half hitch here, you're going to take your end, you're going to go through, and you're going to wrap it around. Then you're going to come back down and you're going to go under and back through again and just tighten it up and it looks like that there very and then it it'll just tighten all the way that's probably a pretty t poor explanation but this is the double half hitch and i always use it to secure because you can put tension and it just tightens more let's just show you that again <gasps> It's going to be a little bit more difficult to come because I didn't make it a quick slip. We'll just show you one more time. Just because. So I'm going to go over. The, the key is to stay on the same side. So if you go under, you want to go under again. So we're going under, going down, wrap it around. Then we're going to go under, pull it through. And there it is. Poor explanation. All right, so for the other side, we're going to do what's called the taut line hitch. I've showed this one before. We're going to go around our tree again. And you just want to stay on the same side uh, when you're doing this. So we're going to go on the inside twice. So go over once. And then you're going to go over again. And we've got the two things right there, wraps. And then we're going to come over to this side. And then we're going to go over on this side. And then we're going to come back through this loop we just made and then pull it tight. So that's a quick release, uh, what we just did. So I can just pull this tag end and it'll come right undone. But this, this uh, knot's really nice because you can pull your rope along and it tightens the whole thing up and keeps it really tight. So there we go. I hope that looked good. I hope you learned something. All right, we wanna keep this about right here.
Okay. What do you think, Monty? What do you think? Stinker? What do you think? Oh, you did. Oh, he's getting vicious. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay, stop. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's clear this out a little bit. Make it even. We don't want your booty sliding around, you know? Oh. How much you can sleep over here or vice versa, yada yada. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Shelter, shelter is set up. Now let's get Mon Monty a comfy spot to lay down. Hey Monty. Which one? We got yours? Oh yeah. We got yours. Where are you going? What? <coughs> oh. No! I had it with your views of sleeping pads. Alright Monty, you're gonna have to just go do something that normal dogs do. Fetch a stick. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get out of here! 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 Get out Monty, come here. Oh, what happened? Oh, I see. I see. You got stuck, Monty. Oh, you got stuck. I see. I see. Game on. Okay. Okay. Okay, Marty. Truce. Truce. Okay. Where are you? Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh yeah, there you go, Monty. Let's take those evil booties off. Right? Let's, let's take your vest off here. I know, you want this vest off so you can lay down. Alright, come on, over here. Lay down in peace. Oh, 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 there you go. Good boy. No, no, that's a good boy. Okay, okay, okay you vicious critter. <laughs> You're a feisty one. You're a feisty. You wanna lay down right here? Come here, Monty. Come here. Yeah, go ahead. That's a good boy. All right, Mon Monty's got a spot. Shelter set up. Now we need to get a firewood going. We have got, ooh, about 15 minutes, maybe even 10 till the sun sets. So like I said, late start, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
So we'll get this rest of camp set up in a minute here. I would like to get a little bit of firewood um, and get started. I can bring back what I need, process it up. There's actually a nice leaner right there that I'm going to grab. So let's grab a tool. I'm gonna choose the ax today. And let's get that, that tree. Oh yeah, this looks perfect. Nice cleaner. We're just gonna set this axe down just to be safe. Safety first. Oh, this thing's wedged. There we go. I don't even need to axe it at all. This looks like some nice solid pine. So we're just gonna bring us back to camp, which is about five feet that way. Let's do it. Oh, got a hauler. All right, this is a nice solid piece. I'm gonna cut them a little bit longer today. We can just burn them. We'll process up a little bit of this, but first I'm gonna grab a few more chunks of stuff. I saw some stuff on the way back a little bit and just Big old branches, like great. Well, Monty tore it up now, but there's like branches that are stuck with falling off trees all over the place. So I'm gonna grab some of that, bring it back, and then we're gonna get a fire started. Okay. This should be plenty. This is more than enough. I'm not even gonna process this all up like crazy. I'm just gonna break off some sticks, cut a few, and then we'll get the fire going and process as the fire starts getting burned up. Some perfect firewood right there. So, I cut another little section, and then we're gonna split some, and then we'll get the fire going. And then we'll cut bigger pieces and just let the fire do all the work and burn it in half. Delicious firewood, perfectly seasoned. Just like a steak with Montreal foreshadowing. It's a thing. We're doing so good. This one might be a little long here.
Okay, that's gonna be enough for right this minute. Um, so we're gonna get the fire started and then uh, we can cut up more logs as we go. Okay, set down a little log base here to build our fire on. Now, normally I start my fires with birch bark as many of you know, but I didn't see any birch bark trees around here. It's all just pines. There's, I'm, I'm sure they're out here if I search far enough, but I haven't come across any. So you're like, oh, what you gonna do now? You always use birch bark. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to reach into my pocket and grab my reserve of birch bark that I just carry all the time because I always just have birch bark on me. <laughs> I've been known to go into a restaurant and when I go to pay the bill, I pull out birch bark out of my pockets. So we're just gonna crumple this up here. Oops. Oh, and you know the whole one strike thing? We've already done that, so. Now I'm, now I'm not too worried about it anymore. That's an in the past sort of thing. Let's burn all that in half. We'll process up some more. You know, I think Monty doesn't want to lay down yet because his spot's not cozy enough. So, Monty, what if I get out ye old wool blanket to make it a nice, cushy, cushy, comfy, super cozy spot? Hmm? What do you think about that? Yeah. Wow, that's real nice, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what Monty's talking about. You're gonna lick that snow out of your paws. You got some, you got some ice chunks in there? Cause you're not wearing your booties. Okay. Let's see, where are my gloves at? Winter's here. Winter woods are beautiful. The temperature tonight is, uh, what is it? Where are we at tonight? I think we're getting in the teens tonight. It's probably gonna be right around low of like 15, 17. Average winter, average winter. Maybe, maybe a little above average. I think right now it's like probably 22 out, maybe less now that we're getting it at night. But there's no wind, we're really protected, so it actually might be warmer than that. It's around there somewhere, but, you know, despite what you think about the cold, and you know how I'm only wearing bibs, which are not insulated, and one layer of smart wool base layers, that's it. Just one layer, pants, top, and the jacket. 
And you might think, hey, that's cold, but it's not because there's one key thing you do, or I like to do on winter camping, and that is keep moving. I'm hiking in, I'm setting up, I'm getting wood, I'm cutting up wood, and then when I'm all done at the end of the day and I'm done moving around and I'm ready to just chill, I've got a nice big fire that I can sit next to. So I'm never usually cold, and if I start to get a chill once I sit around, that's when I put on more layers. So let's just cut, we'll just cut these big, and then we can just let the fire do all the work we don't have to process anymore. You hear that plane, Monty? You hear that plane? Do you hear the plane? Are you a good boy? Feeling? You feel. Oh yeah, you can feel the warmth of the fire from back here. It's not like insanely hot like it is right here, but it's definitely warmer than being 30 feet that way. That's for sure. Well, I guess as we let this burn down, I'm going to get, let's put that light on there. Let's brighten it up a little bit. Let's do that first. Get some stuff out. Ooh, almost forgot. I brought a couple of burgers. Might as well have one now. Cheers. First night of the winter, eh, Monty? Cheers. <laughs> Put that in a safe spot. Okay. So for tonight, for dinner, I'm going to need a nice little coal bed. We won't give any spoilers yet, even though we've already foreshadowed. A little bit, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you have an idea, maybe you have no clue. I'm sure you'll have some kind of an idea. But either way, for my own sake, we're not going to spoil anything, Teddy. <laughs> uh, but we're going to get, while we're waiting, we need a nice coal bed. We're going to wait a little bit. For that to burn down, some things to burn in half, have a nice, nice, nice hot coal bed because, uh, you know, sometimes I cook impatiently, sometimes I'm patient, and we're gonna be patient today. We're gonna be patient. I am going to uh, get a nice coal bed, like I said. We're gonna have the fire going behind it, and we'll set up our cooking spot off to the side and scrape coals. I'll give it myself. Monty's got a nice spot. Maybe we'll throw you the stick some more. You look pretty cozy there, pup. You know, sometimes I always wonder uh, if Monty is like ready for the season. You know, if he's going to be cold, if he's ready for winter. He's got his winter coat. In the like the first winter camp, like is he warm enough? Because you know, over the course of doing it a few times, he's definitely his coat's built up and he is totally prepared. But. For the past like week now, we've gotten we've had a bunch of snow and it's been pretty cold. It's been well below freezing every day. He's got a doggy door that he can go outside whatever he wants. And uh, every morning I've waked up for, like the past week, he's out there laying in the snow. He's got a little bit of snow covered on him and just he's definitely got his coat. Too warm in the house for him. So he's just out there chilling like a old stinker. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, there we go. There we go, Monty. Yeah, you're right at home, aren't you? Aren't you? Aren't you? That's a good boy. Are you going to get treats for dinner? Are you going to get treats? Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. You're going to get some treats. You get the best treats. All right. So we're just going to relax for a bit. I am going to set up my sleep stuff. Hopefully Monty doesn't crawl over it and let the fire burn down for a bit. And then I will check back in with you guys in a wee little bit. So, 
as uh, some of you may know, and if you're new to the channel, you may not know it yet, but uh, last winter wasn't a good winter for sleeping pads. He's... Oh no! Monty's sleeping pad is not holding air. It, uh, it's got a hole in it somewhere. What could have caused a hole? Yeah, I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, had some issues there. So we're going to try to make this the winter of sleeping pads. Don't pop. We don't pop them. So I'm going to take a little extra precautions here. This is uh, this Z-Rest, Thermarest thingy I've used before. This is what Monty lays on the back of the boat to help him keep out of the water. But I'm going to lay this down first. So not only is it extra insulation from the ground, and it'll help me not slip, but any sticks that poke through, you know, will have to go through this first. So it's just a little extra protection for my sleeping pad. I'll probably get a second one of these for old Monty's sleeping pad. He's, he doesn't got one today, but he'll be all right. He'll be all right. But yeah, extra prote protection. We're gonna try to make our sleeping pads last us through the winter without any popping. But if I do have to end up buying a new sleeping pad for old Monty here, uh, I'm going to get him this one, this gray one that you see. That's a thermal that's made for winter camping. Or I don't, I don't know what it's called. It. X-Therm? New Eric? Something like that. I don't know. I got it linked down in my affiliate links. Down in the old affiliate links. It's one of them. I got both of them up there. But uh, it's made for winter camping. I think they make like a mummy type, but I like the, I always like the square. I like the square. Get to use the old military surplus extreme cold bag. Great, right, Monty? We're just getting into it. We're getting ready. Can't forget the dual pillows, because I like it comfy. I gotta have a pillow for my head and a, and a knee pillow. I have to have a knee pillow, okay? I won't, I won't have it without my knee pillow. <laughs> we ain't no ultralight campers out here. Oh, and as far as the affiliate links go, I just want to mention this. Um, there's two free ways to support the channel. One is watching the videos, which is the best way. Always do that. You know, watch and share. And the other free way, that doesn't cost anything to you, is if you shop on Amazon, which I'm sure there's a couple, out of you, a couple of you out there that shop on Amazon from time to time. You can click on one of my links in the description below every video that you'll see I list my gear. You can click on one of those links and you can buy anything you want on Amazon and I get it I I get like a commission or something like that for anything you buy on Amazon after you click on one of those links. So if you're ever feeling up to it, go ahead and click on one of those and buy, you know, like a pair of socks or something. I'll get a couple cents. <laughs> It'll help support the channel. But if you don't do that, at least watch the videos. That's always the best part. Oh, Monty's secondary sleeping bag. This is also mine. This was mine first before it was Monty's. So in spring, late fall, it's my bag. And then when winter creeps around, it's Monty's bag. Right, Monty? So I stink it up first, and you stink it up second, right? We stink back and forth. Hey, Monty. <sighs> Fire's burning nice, nice and hot. Once all these ends are in, we'll throw a couple more pieces on, and that should be plenty good of a fire bed or coal bed to uh, start cooking on. It just can't have all these big pieces everywhere. You know what you look like you need, Monty? A nice stick. You wanna fetch a nice stick? Do you wanna fetch a nice stick? Do you wanna go for the dog park? Do you want a tree? Or a stick? All right. Yeah, I bet you could use a nice stick. You may not go to buy. There's some, happens to just be some perfect sticks right here. 
Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, you like the you like the smell of that stick? You like the Where's it go? You're getting serious. I dare you to throw it. I dare you. Oh I so you throw that. I'm gonna chase after it, but I might not bring it back. There's a 50 chance, 50-50 chance. <gasps> I'll get it, you frosty bunny. I always wonder how he can see. If he brings that stick back, I'll be surprised. I, well, I guess with the light shining in my face, I can't see anything over there. Even if I walk over, eh, uh, maybe I could if I walk past the light. Bunty! Bunty! Bring it here. Bring me the stick, boy. Bring me the stick, Monty. Bring me the stick. Monty, bring me the stick, please. Hello, mate. Bring me the stick, all right? Yar, bring me the stick, yar, mate. Well, Monty, bring me that stick now, boy. I tell you. Show them all how you mind me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. Bring me that stick. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. Come on. Oh, you're almost so close. Come on. Come on. Ready. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Monty. They're so close. I don't want to have to get up. Bring it. Monty. 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 You're so rude. You're so rude. I know how you like to chase it. You bring it back to me, and you can continue to chase it. Hey, go get it. Just kidding, it's right here. Ha 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 Bring me the stick, Monty. Monty, if you don't bring me that stick, I ain't gonna throw it. And that's that. Come on. Oh, there you go. Smack the camera. There you go. Please. 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 Monty, please. Please bring... Just bring it right here. Oh, what's this? Bring the stick. Get the stick. What's this? What's this? Bring the stick. What's this? What's this? Right here. Bring get the stick. Get the stick. Get the stick. Oh, no. What's this? Come here. Right here. What's this, Monty? No, bring me the stick, though. Have the stick in your mouth and come check out what this is. It's super cool. It's right here. It's this. Come on. What is this, Monty? You just don't care. This is a sick game, Monty. You bring it just enough so I have to get up again. I, tr I provide you this comfy spot where you can lay as often as you want, and I come to you, and you, you're you just... You just... I can't even get it with my feet. Bring it here. Come on, right here. Come on. Ooh. Ooh. Eva. What a stinker. I think it's about time to put on some layers. We're going to layer up a little bit. Keep throwing the sick Monty a little bit here. Sip on our beer. Let this burn down. And then we're going to get to cooking. So I'm going to check back in with you guys when it is, it is, this fire is burned down. Because I want to shut off that light. I kind of want to just see the moonlight coming through the forest on the trees because it'll i'll be able to see with this light's not here and just the fire you know glowing around so we're just gonna relax for a bit let the fire continue to burn down and yeah layers all that good stuff yada 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 okay stir the stick oh yeah we got a nice pile of coals here Keep the fire going. 
while we cook. It's almost cook time. I moved Monty here because, um, you know, ever since Monty is still a pup, he's he's younger. He's what? What are you, Monty? You now three and a half, three and three quarters. He's almost four. He's almost like full blown dog, dog, stuck in his ways, dog. But he's not there quite yet. I would say once he hits four, he's dog complete dog not not on the pup side like he's still like or what would he be in dog years 7 14 21 so he's in his he's in his mid 20s right now mid 20s so he's still got a couple things to learn once he hits four we're gonna be on like the same page where we're at exact same page so he's still got a little bit more catching up anyways on our week-long one that I released into one chunk Monty finally was seeking out the fire for warmth um he never really did that like i'd have to you know course him into it and like show him like hey this is warmth he would never like go seek out the fire he'd go wander off and be all dramatic and whatever but anyways he was just coming over near the fire because it's nice and toasty and he was laying right here so i decided to move his stuff so he's closer and yeah he is just sleeping you can feel the warmth of the fire in his fur he doesn't want to be too close because you gotta remember, he's a dog. He's got the big, thick fur coat, and he's got an undercoat, so he doesn't want to be right next to it. So this is perfect. I can just feel a little bit of warmth. So our Monty is toasty, and he is just sleeping. But yeah, he learned. He learned to sit near the fire if you want to be warm. It took him long enough. But anyways, let's talk about dinner. It is time to get cooked and prepare and dinner. This is way too hot for me. I'm gonna have to figure this out because I'm a little too close to the fire and yeah this is really hot I can't even have this have my hands on this Ow, oh, that burns anyways so what we are having for dinner tonight is it a big chunk of meat is it a nice creamy pasta dish is it some kind of seafood dish well we're gonna combine all three there and we are going to have a big chunk of meat with a creamy sauce with some seafood yeah so we are going to have a pound and a half new york strip with a creamy parmesan sauce drizzled over it with some fresh herbs and then we're gonna also put some uh prawns in that sauce and serve it with freshly grilled asparagus and sauteed potatoes and onions yeah, we're starting the season off right this time. <laughs> Okie dokie. We're going to need... Oh, it's stuck here. No. Why are you doing this? There we go. Okay, this pot. this pot three different pots for three different jobs and the reason I use these is actually all nestled together in my little I don't even know what where the heck this came from this stuff sack I, I don't know I have no clue couldn't tell you in a million years where this thing came from but everything nestles together three different types of pans three different companies it all works it's all great okay so the first thing we're gonna start with is some red potatoes Probably got too many potatoes, but that's okay. I think we'll find a way to move all of these potatoes cooked into my belly. Not a problem. I'm pretty good about that. I'm like a magician. 
If food appear, I make it disappear. Abracadabra, right, Monty? Oh, that one's gonna be a little thick. A little thick on that side. These are a little thick. I'm gonna slice them a little thinner this way. Oh yeah, I think three red potatoes is enough. And then of course we've got our white onion. Oh, I think we can... Is that too much onion? Of course not. Of course not. Alright, we've got asparagus. I cut off the ends at home and rinsed it. But it's all going to just fit in that pan. We'll do half of it this way. Now as far as these plastic baggies go and like these rubber bands, uh, I'm doing my best to not use as many plastic bags. So these are what you get at the grocery store to put your food in. I try to just use these. What I'm doing now is I've got Tupperwares where I'm putting all this in my butter, my herbs, and I've got the, uh, the other stuff. I'm using Tupperwares and stuff now. Reusable. Trying to be reusable, you know? Help the environment out. What are we doing? What do we What do we got going next? Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what's next. We got garlic. Oh. A little garlic, a little garlic. Who doesn't like garlic? Well, I'm gonna use these big fat thumbs of mine. Crush a little bit. That's a trick I learned from you guys, my subscribers, to crush the garlic, clove, just a little bit. Usually use a knife, but uh, once you crush it like that, look at how easy that comes off. It just peels right off. Boom. It's just coming right off like nothing. Look at those husks peel away. Then we'll just do, keep two over there. I'm not gonna dice this up insanely fine. Because it'll all get cooked in eventually. I like my chunks and bites of garlic, so it doesn't matter to me if it's a little big. So we're gonna put these in with the potatoes and onions. Monty, you're gonna get food. Just simmer down. These pieces of garlic are gonna go in with our sauce. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a chunk of butter, so just a little teeny chunk of butter here with the uh, onions there, just a little teeny chunk of butter here with the asparagus, just a wee little teeny chunk of butter here with the sauce, and then we're going to leave this tiny portion of butter to add to all three of these when they need a little unsticking. So you know we're only using, let's see if a whole stick's this much. We're using about, let me see if I portion out one. About a whole stick of butter, yeah. Yeah. Actually you know what we're gonna do one more thing. And that is to get our steak seasoned. We go. That's a pound and a half bone in New York strip. And what are we going to season it up with? The only thing you'd ever want to season up a steak, and that's Montreal steak seasoning. Oh, yeah. Except we're going to stop right here. I want you to see. See that? 
That is one third of the entire steak. The bone's right, where is the bone? Where is the bone? Oh, the bone's over on this side. There's no bone here. So Monty's gonna get all this fat, or maybe there's a chunk of bone here. Oh yeah, there's a little chunk of bone here. But it's only this big. Yeah, a teeny little bone. Anyways, we're gonna stop the spices there. And that's because Monty's gonna get that third of steak. I'm gonna leave, yeah. He's gonna get a third of the steak. You heard me, Monty, a one third. Because I did the math, he's 70 pounds. I'm, uh, you know, 210. That means I'm three times his size, so I should get three times the food, but since I'm gonna be generous with the guy, I'm only gonna take double what he's getting. What do you think, Monty? Is that thick enough? Is that a nice, yeah, I, th I, th I think. What do you think, Monty? You want that? You want that raw meat? If I just give it to you, would you would you promise to save some for me, or would you eat it all? Nah, how, how about I cook it for you? I, I think I should cook it for you. I, I think, I, yeah, let's, okay, let's get it on the fire. Let's get cooking. Now, normally, I'd bring out the great great, greatest of all greats in the land, but uh, we've got a few extra things to cook. <coughs> we've got a few extra things to cook today. <laughs> so, we're going to bring out what is known as the lesser great great. It's lesser because it's not the great great because the greatest the great great is the greatest great. You can't you can't beat the great great. It just it's just not possible. It doesn't work out like that. But this has got more surface area to cook on. Oh, and that is a hot fire. Oh man. So the great great is just the best. And this 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 will do. It's got more surface area, but as I've seen, it's more prone to breaking. But the great great has never failed. Not once. I've never spilled food in the fire. I've never accidentally tipped things or I've never I'm I'm usually perfect when I'm cooking. Always. Like hundred percent. I never mess up. So that's why that grate is so great. That is why. Okay. Get that on there. We'll get this going on there. We're gonna do this off to the side. I'm gonna add a little spice to these potatoes here. We're gonna add a little salt, not too much salt. Not too little salt, just right amount of salt, but I just added too much salt. That was my bad. I was about to say my thing. That was a lot of salt. Those are gonna be a little salty. Oops. A little pe black pepper. Oh, that's a hot fire. Oh, man. We could just add more wood to that, just so it's even hotter. I burn my face. Oh no! The butter needs to melt. Let that butter melt down, because I want to get a jump on these potatoes and onions. So that's going to take longer than our thick steak. And the butter and garlic over here. We're going to try to simmer this slow. I'm going to move this over here. Keep this on the other. Oh, that burns the face. All right, we've got our, we're going to do the next steps in the cream sauce here. We've got our garlic roast up a little bit of butter. Now we're going to add a little cream sauce or start to make the cream sauce better. That is some heavy whipping cream right there. What else we got here? We got some thyme, fresh thyme. Oh, the water's hot. Oh, oh geez. Oh, I can't get my hands over it. Oh, let's get a little coals or ashes in there. All right, fresh thyme. Fresh thyme. We got fresh rosemary. Come and said hello. 
a little more time in here. Ah, there's the French rosemary. Oh, it's so warm. <laughs> this is a hot fire. Hot fire! Which I guess is the best type of fire. You don't want a cold fire. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Did it in my hand first. I don't want too much salt. There we go. Little black pepper. And there's one more key ingredient we got to add in there. And that key ingredient is a fresh, freshly harvested Monty turd. Now, want to make sure with your Monty turds, you got to check them out for freshness. You got to just, you got to give them the old taste test. Mmm. Aerate it in your mouth a little bit. Get all your taste buds working. Mmm. The robustness of the, uh, the freshness. Mmm. The flavor. That's a 10. That Monty turn right in there. Oh, there we go. Mm. Want to taste your own home, home cooking there, Monty? Yeah, he likes his own home cooking. Of course he does. Of course. Add a little splash of water. That'll be good. Perfect. All right. We are cooking. Ooh, that's a hot fire. Oh, the face. All right. Our cream sauce is over here just simmering away. It's time to get the main course cooking. Get that right on there. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we're doing it. Now we're doing it. Right, Monty? Oh yeah. are cooking away. Oh, that's going to be good. We need to get some fresh coals. Take a little flip here. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's so good. Oh yeah. Oh, she's cooking. Oh, we're getting a perfect little crust on there. Oh. Uh, cream sauce is simmering just fine. Looking delicious. I can't even tell you what I'm smelling right now because there's just three glorious things cooking. Oh, that is a hot fire. You know, some people say fire is hot. I can agree with it, because it is. It's burning my freaking hands. And my face. Oh. Time to add a few more goodies on this year fire. We've got some big old prawns. We're gonna add right about here. There we go. They're a little frozen, so they'll they'll cook just fine. And then to our cream sauce, we've got some uh, cream cheese. Cream cheese going in.
We're gonna need another little chunk of butter here with these potatoes. They're starting to get real sticky. Get that butter in there. Get these over here. Asparagus, we're just gonna... We'll cook over there for now, right now, right this second. There's too much going on here. Things are getting a little chaotic. Just had a little bit of salt and pepper, the old asparagus. So the reason I go with salt and pepper on everything but the steak is like, I like the Montreal to be on the steak. You know, salt and pepper these, add garlic here, garlic and butter here, or no garlic here. And then we got the fresh herbs here. So we got different flavors all across the board. And then we'll just start stuffing it in our face and it won't matter, but it's a thought that counts. Okay, time to flip these. Ooh. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Ah. Oh. 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 Ha. Ah. Oh. That's a hot steak. Okay, that steak is about done. Um. Oh. 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 Let's get all crazy now. Okay, let's just, we're going to flip this around, okay, okay, ooh asparagus, forgot about you, we got one final step to the cream sauce here, and it's going in hot, parmesan cheese, creamy cheese sauce. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, all right. It's it's getting a little chaotic because uh, you know hunger is a hunger is a huge factor. My poor cutting board. Well, we lost another one. <laughs> Dang it! Dang that! The cheese sauce is complete. The shrimp are done. Let's let's plate this bad boy together. Okay. These are definitely done. Get this mess out of the way. Our steak is done. Oh yeah. The shrimp are done. Potatoes over on the side here. Let's throw water. Now we're gonna get Monty enough food, more than enough. A little powder pumpkin, which we know you're not gonna really care about, Monty, but you gotta have your options. Okay. Now let's cut into this thing. That's about Monty's share right there. Let's see where we're at. Ooh, it's a little bit on the rare side, but that's okay. Ooh, yeah, Monty's gonna love that. Ooh, Monty. This is way too much steak for a dog. Some people like it rare, some people like it medium rare. This is a little on the rare side, but that you know what? It's gonna be okay. Add that over Monty's food here. That is so much, look at that, it's a bowl of steak for Monty.
Uh, do you want this piece of steak? This juicy piece of steak? Good boy. Yes. Yes, Monty. You are being hand... Oh, 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 Monty. Monty, I'm going to hand feed you a little more steak, okay? No, you... Oh, 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 okay, okay. All right, all right, good boy. Good boy. We had to take a few minutes to hand feed Monty a few pieces of his steak, but let's add in our glorious piece of steak here. Cut off this bone. Okay. Got in our steak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now let's add. We had to peel them out of the shell. Oh, and they're very hot. Oh, I ripped out of the towel. No. Oh, a little piece of shell. We'll, just, we'll move that around a little bit. Oh, okay. Asparagus. I guess we'll give Monty a few pieces of asparagus because I've got a whole bunch. And now for the grand finale. The creamy cheese sauce over the shrimp and steak. We're just gonna smother it on there. Oh yeah. <laughs> just, let's just lather it on. All of it. Why not? Potatoes, asparagus, everything. Creamy cheese sauce. <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh, wait, we're not done. We're not done. Of course we're not done. Wait, Monty, before we eat, sprinkle on some fresh parsley. Just, 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 it's got to have that garnish, Monty. There we go. <laughs> You can't even see the steak under all the cheesy deliciousness. Okay. Okay. It is time to eat. It is time to feast. Monty, it is time. Oh, man. I am so excited right now. Okay. My boy Monty here has already been hand-fed some New York strip steak. He got a big portion of his. He's still got asparagus, more steak. He's got dog food mixed with pumpkin and water, ready to go. I have a New York strip steak, big chunk of it, cooked very rare, with some prawns on top, creamy cheese parmesan sauce, with some Monte turds, with a little asparagus, potatoes, onions, with fresh parsley. I am ready to feast. Monty, are we starting the year right with winter camping? I think so. Let's do this. Go ahead. I'm gonna eat some asparagus first. Mm-hmm. Cooked very well. Let's dive right into a big old prawn. Mouthful of seafood. Mmm. What just happened? The weight from the food bent my little handle here. Not very dangerous. Mind you, have another asparagus. Mm hmm. Mm. Okay. Let's go for the real deal. A cheesy, encrusted, rare New York strip steak.
No. There is not much that I care about right now. asparagus yeah eat your asparagus you little turd nugget Did you just burp at me? How dare you? No one can deny. This little turd got enough. He got over a cup of food with water and pumpkin. On top of that, he got a third of a pound and a half steak. So let's see. Pound and a half. That's at least a third of a pound. More like, let's say, 0.4 of a pound. All right? If we're if we're if we're toning it down, he got 0.4 pounds of a steak on top of his normal meal. Asparagus. Yeah, you're fine. Don't you even. I don't feel bad. Not one bit. Mm. It's, it's so good. I'm slowing down. I'm on my second beer. Mm. It's like slush. I threw all the rest of the wood on the fire. I am going to I can't believe I bent this pan. I will fix that. I'm going to keep just trucking away at this. Dealing with this guy shooting daggers. Oh no. I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. But I'm done with this here. That was very filling. That was insanely filling. The the cheese sauce was way more rich and just filling than I thought it would be. 
so instead of saving Monty like cheesy potatoes or something I did him a solid and I saved him a giant chunk of fat off the steak you want this? you want this? Don't you? Yes. Come to the dark side. Your transformation will be complete. You know, he's had a lot of steak this evening. He's had more than most dogs get in a lifetime. So I'm going to make you work for it, twirl. Sit. Sit pretty. Sit prettier. Sit prettier again. Sit prettier. Come on. Come on, Monty. Sit pretty. Sit pretty. Come here. Come over here. Over here. Over here. Alright, sit pretty. I can use my hands for support. Speak. 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 Okay, you're gonna pop the sleeping pad. Come, oh, you're stepping in your water. Come over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Okay. Speak. Speak. It's your last task. All you gotta do is speak, and then you get this this whole chunk. Speak. It's gotta be a real speak, though. That was a happy speak. Okay, that was a real speak. Good boy. Come here. Careful. Careful. Okay, there you go. You worked for it. You done good, Monty. <laughs> you worked for that one. Come back over here and sit down. Come here. Go over here. Come here, Monty. Come here. Come on. No, no, there's no more. Listen, you're going to puke if you eat any more. Stop it. Monty. Yeah, yeah, come over here. Jeez. You're literally going to puke. Your stomach cannot fit any more food in it. It can't. He... He will vomit if he eats more. Look at this little scavenger turd nugget. Okay, I'm stuffed. I am very stuffed. That was delicious. I'm borderline uncomfortable right now. I am. It's true. Hot fire. I've got nasty pans, Monty's nasty dish. He didn't want any of the water I gave him. So, I'm going to clean up here, put Monty's bed in the right spot. He is going to continue looking for scraps, trying to make himself puke, I guess. Because what he want, he did, his brain doesn't, he, they must not, ha, he must not get like me. Because like, I can tell like if I eat more, I'm going to puke. I can tell what I'm going to puke. He can't. I've seen him do it. I've seen him puke from eating too much. He's licking my knee. I must have got a cheese saucer or something. Just, anyways, yeah, we're going to figure it out, and then we'll check back in with you when you're ready for bed. Come here, Monty. All right, Monty. It's time for bed there, bud. Come on. Come on. Lay down. Let's go to bed. You know the drill. No, don't do that. Or do that if you want, okay? Okay. Orky dogs. Oh, let's get you zipped away here. You okay if I scoot your butt? Is that okay? You accept? Oh, okay. See, I just need to do that. Okay. Everything's fine. Let's just accept where we are. We're in a sleeping bag now. Okay. some extra warmth. And I think I think that should do. Well I am full. 
our Monty is settled and zipped into his sleeping bag. I am going to take off this outer shell, leave my thermals on, crawl into this here sleeping bag under this here tarp with next to this here crackling fire with this here full stomach and pass out and go to bed. It was a good first night of winter camping. That was a good meal. So anyways guys, me and him are going to catch you guys in the morning. Good night everybody. Gotta do your nightly Monty check. Oh, oh, that right there. That's a good sign. Means he's still in there. Yeah, he's still in there. in there. You sleepy, Monty? Yeah. Yeah, he looks a little, he looks a little cozy in there. All right, Monty. You want to, you want an option to flip sides? Let's see if he wants to flip sides. Flip sides. You have that? Oh, yeah. Okay, my dude. There you go. Up, up. up. There you go. Okay, there you go. drink He'll figure it out. But that's our nightly ritual. Always gotta make sure he's comfy, gets his water in, and we'll eventually lay it back down. Oh, hey! Hi! Hi! Hi, Monty! Oh, hi! Oh, look at you! You crawled halfway out of your sleeping bag, didn't you? Yeah! Oh, you frisky critter! Yes, you're dead! Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on! We'll give you a morning Monty rub down. How about that? Yeah. 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 See? see? Yeah. 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 See, this is better than just getting up, right? Yeah. 
Oh, yes, that's sticky. Yes, sticky. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh. You just, you just, are you rubbing your face on my arm? Oh. Booty drums. Oh. All right, Monty, you go, you go greet the day. You go ahead, you go greet the day. Oh, it's a little chilly out, even though it's nice and warm. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like do this for just a minute here. Just like this. There we go. So I slept pretty darn good last night. Um, it was snowing a little bit last night. Not crazy much, just a little teeny bit. So I knocked off the tarp a little bit. And uh, Monty needed a few adjustments. We did that last night. That's our, our nightly drill. You know, I get up, uh, open up the bag, let him switch sides, <sighs> offer him some water. I don't offer him water every time, but I can tell if he's thirsty if he wants to get up and like go eat some snow. But uh, yeah. I'm as much as I can I sleep well out here but when I'm with Monty and just in general when I'm out camping I wake up at the slightest noise any noise and that's like I think that it's important you know to wake up for Monty but also in case there's some crazy weird animal or something creepy <sighs> but anyways this is a bright, beautiful blue skies day. I don't see any clouds up there. I just see, you know, blue skies. And it's chilly. So, we're going to get up and get skedaddling here because, uh, yeah, I've got to go home and edit up this here video, you know, and then get it ready for tomorrow. Ooh. It's gonna take the whole day. What is this? <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get up. Let's do it, Monty Butt. Let's do it. Let's do it. see Monty's best trick look at him he's clapping his legs that's a nice trick Monty clap your legs good boy that's a good trick that's a good trick that's a good trick come here come here you want a stick you want a stick you want a stick let's go get a stick come on. yeah we got a stick we got a stick we gotta slap the throw. Oh boy, watch this. Oh. That's how you get warmed up in the morning. Do a little running around. Oh. Get it, Monty. I can see it from here. You get that stick. Go get it, Monty. And you go fetch. You play fetch. Monty's not fetching, I, I fetch. Okay. Ah. Monty, it's b Come on, dude. Go get it. I could see it again. Get your head in the game. Come on, go get it. 
There you go, good boy. There you go, yeah. It's right over there. Go get it, Monty. Get it, Monty. Uh, all right. Play and fetch with myself. This is so fun. Can you do this? Are you capable? <gasps> That's a yes, okay. Oh, oh. Come on, get that stick, Monty. You get that stick. It went to the same spot. I just showed him twice where it was. Get it, Monty. Good boy, get it. Come on, get it. Use your brain. Use the powers of dog to sniff it out. Why? Why? Look at how taut this thing is from the taut line hitch. Alright, well, I guess, uh, I guess I'm gonna go fetch my own stick again. I'm. Yeah. final try. Please. Please. If you don't get this one, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Good boy. Get it, Monty. He's right there. Get it. Come on. Yes. He did it. He did it. You did it. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I only had to fetch it like 18 times. Get him, Monty. I throw it the exact same. My accuracy has been so good. And you keep going to different spots. I've abandoned all hope with Monty and Fetch right now. So, like I said, we're not doing any coffee, any oatmeal, anything fancy. No breakfast today. I've got some stuff to do for you guys. Gotta get this here video out. It's a beautiful day. So, oh, he brought it back. He brought it back. So, anywho, it is time to pack up our camp and get on our way. Yes. Yes. Alright. Why clean up today what you can save a rat's nest for tomorrow? As I always say. Time to put on your booties. Got a whole pocket full of them. Djiboutis, Monty. Djiboutis. One more thing, Monty. Safety first. You look like a reindeer, so we don't want you getting shot at. Because you'd be a nice, plumpy reindeer. Plumpy, juicy. Okay. There you go, Monty. Now you're all good to go. Now you're all good to go. Go ahead. Go ahead, Monty. You got your vest and your booties on. Good boy. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, oh, what the heck? Always got to strip down for the hike out. I don't want to sweat. I don't want to sweat.
We got it all, Monty. Yeah. We got it all, you big butt. Okie dokes. That was just a successful first little winter camping overnight for the first time of the year. Sure we'll be doing this again soon, eh Monty? Get some shelter building in soon. Some kind of shelters. Got a couple ideas. But anyways, that was a delicious feast last night. I made some rancid farts inside my sleeping bag. I had to like zip it out and escape for air. It was pretty rough. But uh, yeah. We're gonna get cruising back to the car, heading on home and getting this video ready for tomorrow. So as always, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more stuff like this, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys at the next video. Come on, D, let's go.